From Boise to Middleton, the 5A and 4A Southern Idaho Conferences feature 20 of the largest schools in Idaho. Highlighting the big plays and big stories from Idaho's biggest schools, this is the SIC PrepCast with Wayne DeZubak. That's right. Welcome into another edition of the SIC PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com, breaking down everything in the Southern Idaho Conference. Brandon Bainey with Wayne DeZubak. You know, I've said it multiple times on this podcast. It's Rocky Mountains world and we're all living in it. <laughs> that, that no longer applies, does it, Wayne? No, it really doesn't because Mountain View came a knocking and they said, hey, wait a minute, maybe it's Mountain View's world now again. So, you know, that was the biggest surprise I think last Friday night was Mountain View beating Rocky Mountain. And the only reason it was a surprise to me was because it was at Rocky Mountain. You know, Rocky Mountain's awful tough to beat anywhere, but at home, they're almost impossible to beat over the last three years. So for Mountain View to go in there and to win that game, especially coming off the win over Meridian 14-13, the game, really, they were behind most of the game, came out in the third quarter a couple of weeks ago, looked great, but then it was like back and forth, back and forth. It didn't tell me a lot about Mountain View, Brandon, what, how good they were or what. And so, you know, and then you got to remember that, you know, Rocky hadn't played since they beat Highland over in Pocatello. So really you had a couple of unknowns in what we found out that both teams are still awfully good. They're going to battle it out all the way through the playoffs probably. But bottom line was that was my big surprise of the night. Really a 26-20 Mountain View winning that one. When I saw the final score, I went, whoa, because it was at Rocky Mountain. In fact, I was heading back from my game that I did Friday night over at Meridian. I have to go right by Rocky Mountain High School, and they're all coming out. And I was thinking, I better be careful. There may be some mad Rocky Mountain people here. I better be careful driving. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I think a lot of people think that might be a potential preview of the SIC championship yeah. game in the last week of the regular season. So, Yeah, I don't think they're done yet, Brandon. I think we're going to hear more from those two. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Mountain View, uh, what a difference a year makes, Wayne. We talked about last year, they they had to play the same gauntlet of games and they lost them and, and dug a hole. This year, they're they're finding ways to win, even, even if they're kind of uh, low scoring, you know, ugly affairs, you know, they're finding ways to win. You know, as somebody once said, it doesn't matter if it's ugly or whatever, as long as it's a W, that's the only thing that matters. And so what's interesting for those who can't remember last year, really Mountain View opened up. They opened up against Rocky, lost, lost to Meridian, lost to Eagle. And now they're playing the same team, so a little flip-flop, but they lost uh, you know, to Meridian, but they bounced back and they were able to beat Rocky Mountain. Now next week they play Eagle, and so it's going to be interesting. Well, next week, this week, they play Eagle Friday night. Uh, boy, I tell you what's amazing that we're already into week three, but uh, they have done. They've done a little flip-flop here, but I think they really have to win that Eagle game to feel like they've really done that big flip-flop from where they were a year ago. Yeah, the 26 to 20 win by Mountain View snapped like a uh, four game win streak for Rocky Mountain in the SIC. So that was certainly noteworthy, uh, to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to go back a minute. I think my brain, I'm thinking about so many games that my brain said they lost to Meridian. They beat Meridian 14-13. So I apologize for that. So they're 2-0 and as to compared to 0-2 last year. So quite frankly, yeah, Meridian is on a whole, uh, excuse me, Mountain View is on a whole new path. Yep, absolutely. Uh, speaking of Meridian, that was one of the games you covered last week, mm-hmm. Wayne. You did you did the Thursday, Friday double dip as usual. Uh, tell us a little bit about the two games you ha- had the call for. Well, quickly, the Thursday game was Timberline against Ridgeview. Not much of a game there. Ridgeview still got some issues. That was their opening game of the season as they didn't have enough practices or players to open up against Sentry a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 48-15, Timberline won that game. It was all Timberline, as the final score might indicate. Then on Friday night, I did that Meridian Centennial game. Now, I thought this was going to be a really good game. Centennial had opened up with a win over Hawaii. They were looking pretty good. I thought, well, man, this is going to be something. And it turned out to be all Meridian, 41 to nothing. But the story in that game was the quarterback. Remember, I told you that Malachi Martinez, the starting quarterback for Meridian when they played Mountain View, got hurt late in that Mountain View game. Well, he was he didn't play. He didn't play against Centennial last Friday night. But his little brother, a freshman, Zeke Martinez, played. So you got the senior, Malachi, the freshman, Zeke. Zeke didn't start that game. They had another kid come in there and start it off. But they brought Zeke in. And you know they're not thinking about him because he's a QB. And guess what number he wears? He wears number 25. Not your typical quarterback number. So they told me before the game, don't be surprised if Zeke comes in. So I was waiting for him. He came in. And the guy was just unbelievable in what he was able to accomplish. 
I'm telling you, Brandy, I don't think I've ever seen anybody as a freshman play the way he did. He played like he was a five-year senior. I mean, it was just unbelievable what he was able to do. And his final stats, he was 10 of 14. Where am I? 10 of 14. And he had, what, 140 yards? I've lost my stats here on this guy. But uh, uh, he, and three touchdowns. Yeah, 180 yards and three 180 touchdowns. Yards. Yeah. yeah. So 10 of 14, 180 yards and three touchdowns. That's not a freshman. He did, they just put him in there. Yeah. And, it's, and it, there he goes. And, and it's different. You know, we see freshmen play at the man level and the 2A level. It's different in the SIC to step in and be a freshman. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So we were laughing. I was, I was kind of talking about it during the game that this could be an interesting conversation all week. Malachi may not get his job back, you know, because little bro Zeke, you know, is kind of pushing him there. So I would have liked to have been a fly at the dinner table checking out that conversation. I think well, Malachi will start again, but uh, they want to save, they want to save Zeke for big things next year. You know what I uh, think could be intriguing, Wayne, is we get on the line and, and Malachi Martinez returns. I, I believe, is it was it a concussion that is keeping him out? Or I can't remember. No, it was a shoulder but, injury. Yeah, it was shoulder. a shoulder thing. It was kind of a slight separation of the shoulder. That's what kept him out. So they, they felt comfortable playing Centennial. I think they knew the coaches did what they had there against Centennial, that they were okay. and But they wanted to give – they were up 7 nothing when they brought Zeke in. So they were ahead of the game when they brought Zeke in. It wasn't like things weren't going well. They were okay. But when they brought him in, it just seems like things clicked. He started, and then he threw the craziest passes. I mean, he threw, you know, to a guy in the end zone. I said, no way it's going to be completed. It was right on the money. It was just unbelievable what Martinez did. So I was I was duly impressed at this freshman. I guarantee you, think about this kid. We're going to be thinking of talking about him a lot down the road. I, I'm excited to see, Wayne, if Meridian does this later in the year when Malachi is back. You put both of them in the backfield together. Who, which guy's mm -hmm. throwing the ball? You don't know. <laughs> no, there's a lot of things that they can do. But again, in, in this in this state, you just don't see freshmen, ninth graders, playing uh, at any level. I mean, maybe once in a while in soccer, but other than that, you just don't see it. So the fact that they had enough confidence to put him in a game where they're already leading seven nothing, and you know how that goes. You you got a flow. You're leading. Why mess with the flow? You know, but they did, and he came out there, and from the get-go, almost the first pass, boom, down the field, like a three-play, 80-yard drive, touchdown, and they're on the board. Now, he's got, you know, Cross Antonacci there at running back. He can hand off. It takes the pressure off of him, but he didn't need to pressure off of him. He was really cool under pressure himself. Yeah. Uh, I want to revisit that Timberline game. You did just really quickly 48 to 15 win over Ridgeview. Timberline's 2-0. Oh, we, they were one of Zubac's dark horses in the preseason. Yeah, they were. What what do you think of Timberline? They they look pretty good, but uh, you know Ridgeview obviously wasn't the best competition. That was their first game of the season. No, but like I say, it was their first game of the season because of what we told you about lack of players, lack of practices. But you know Timberline did what they needed to do. They won it big. They won it handily. They won it decisively. They did the things that a good team does. You know Ian Smart really has them going. They've got a lot of confidence. They feel good about themselves. You know, really, they're they're going to be somebody to contend with. You cannot sleep on the Wolves this year. They're not going to let you do that. And they will come out at you. And they were on the attack all night long, and that's what I liked about it. They came out, and they came after you. So they weren't sitting there going, oh, okay, let's hopefully this goes well in the first quarter. No, they were coming out saying, this will go well in the first quarter because we're going to come out after you. Yeah. Uh, other 5A SIC games from last week. You had Eagle. They're 2-0 uh, over CUNA, 42-7. We talked about CUNA, just a program that lost so much. They're they're going to be, uh, unfortunately, I think, on the wrong side of a lot of these scores as they're trying to find yeah. their footing. So Eagle looks good at 2-0. You Boise got their first win over Caldwell. I mean, 65-18. to 18, this, Yeah. They put 65 on the board. I mean, and, and no matter who it is, you may say, well, it was against Caldwell, but I don't care. 65 points on the board. You know, that's that that's pretty impressive. And I get to do them uh, tomorrow, Thursday night. OK, they play Skyview. And that's going to be interesting. Skyview's off to a 2-0 and start. Skyview last week beat Napa 21-0. So we got Skyview and then we got Boise at 1-1. And that game's at Donald Larson Park. So it's at the home of Boise High. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Brave come and, and respond to that 60. Sometimes that's all you need is a big win. And whether it's against Caldwell or whoever you think, Hey, you know, we're world beaters. Now you can't, you can't touch us. We're coming after you. 
That's right. You mentioned Skyview 2-0. They've won the unofficial City of Nampa title. They beat yeah. Columbia in week one. They've shut out Nampa high 21 to nothing. I think, Wayne, that's, that game says a lot more about Nampa than it does Skyview. We, we've talked about We've been pretty high on Nampa, whereas maybe not everybody else is. And I think Nampa playing a 5A Skyview team actually has a lot to be encouraged by in a 21 nothing loss. They really do. Nampa's one of those teams, you know, 6-3 a year ago in the playoffs, felt good about themselves, felt they could take it all the way this year. And, you know, it's been tough. It's not been easy for them. You know, the problem with Napa, again, it has always been the confidence level. You know, if one thing goes wrong, then all of a sudden the confidence level drops down to where you've got to bring it back. Mental, I, I cannot I cannot emphasize this enough. Mental is the name of the game in football. I mean, seriously, you come into a ball game and you come in and you say, you're going to have to beat us because we're not going to be beat. And I don't know that Napa's there yet. I really think sometimes they come in thinking, oh, we should be able to beat this team, but can we? They need yeah. to come in saying, oh, yeah, this is a team we will beat, and they haven't done that yet. So we'll see if Napa can turn it around a little bit. But you're right, 5A team, Skyview. But Skyview's still down you know, on the chart of 5As. They're kind of on the lower part of that chart. So you know, for Napa to lose that way, uh, you know, I'd hate to see them if they had played a Rocky or a Mountain View, somebody like that, see what the final would have been. Right, for sure. The final uh, 5 ASA team was Bora. They played Bishop Kelly, which is the I think the clear top dog in the 4 ASIC. And Bishop Kelly ran away with it, 45 to 19. They did. And Bishop Kelly, I mean, Bishop Kelly had a tough opener. I think I got to hand it to BK. They decided to open up with a pair of 5A teams. They played Eagle, 35-33 was the final. Eagle won that game first week of the season. And then they said, okay, bring on Bora. We've got another 5A team. We'll go after it. And they won that game, like you said, handily. And with that in mind, you go to the 4A polls this week, and there's a little bit – they've got some question marks there. The media says Skyline is number one out of Idaho Falls, BK number two. They flip-flop it according to the coaches. So the coaches saw something maybe the media didn't, and they've got BK number one. Bottom line, too early in the season. Bottom line, I always hang with the guy that was there before. Like last year, I hung with Rigby all year long because those guys had won it. They kept coming after you. And until Skyline does something that, you know, isn't Skyline-ish, you know, I'm going to stick with the Grizzlies as the, maybe the number one team right now. But still, coaches saw something in BK with those two games that they played five, against 5A level and said, yeah, BK is going to be tough to beat this year. Okay, that's interesting, Wayne, because I'm the uh, I'm the exact opposite. I feel like right. just you're the defending champ. You're not owed anything, and you you gotta everybody resets, and you've got to prove it. So, actually, Wayne, uh, I, I vote in that media poll every week, and since the preseason all the way through week three, Bishop Kelly has never not been the number one team in my personal poll. I've I've had Bishop Kelly as the number one team, so I I kind of side with the coaches on this one, which is blasphemous in the media. But no, I agree with your philosophy, though. I agree with it. You. You're never owed anything. You know, Rigby wasn't owed anything last year. Certainly, you know, uh, Skyline's not owed anything this year. You've got to earn it. I agree 100%. But I also go with if things are, if you're tossing a coin as to who should be number one, right now I'm giving the heads to Skyline, you know, and we'll see what happens. So, you know, maybe one more weekend that'll change drastically. But, you know, so that's what I'm saying. But I agree with you 100% that you're not owed anything. You've got to come in, you got to earn it every week, and you got to get her done. And yes, BK is impressive. They should have probably beaten Eagle. They were right there almost getting ready to score the winning touchdown. And just what it is. But I've said this before. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know, things happen. It's over. It's done. You've got to move on. And you can't say what could have been. Yep. One thing we haven't talked about too much with the schedule this year, uh, we talked about the 5 ASIC and how there's 12 teams and it's this mega conference now. And they had to split it into two divisions, right? And so it's right. a division of six and a division of six, and only those five games against the other teams in your division actually count towards your conference record. So, for example, that Rocky Mountain View game didn't actually count in the league standings because they're in opposite divisions. But what that's done is given those teams more flexibility with their schedules, Wayne, where in years past where it was a giant 10 or 11 team league, you were pretty much playing five ASIC teams from the jump. And now... <laughs> because of the flexibility in the schedule, you BK is able to play Eagle. Boise is able to play Caldwell. I actually kind of like it, these 5A, 4A cross matchups. I like it a lot. And you're right, that Mountain View and, uh, you know, Rocky Mountain game the other night, it's not a league game in the sense that they're in the same division. But what it is, it's a head game, <laughs> you know. So it's definitely a head game that they've got going there. And right now, Mountain View is feeling a little bit better about themselves this week. But 
I, I do like the way they've got it all set up and uh, in the divisions and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out and where we go. And, of course, as we get into the season a little bit further, we'll talk about it. But I do love the fact that Eagle was able to play BK. I do love the fact that you mix it up a little bit and that voice he's able to play Caldwell. And you get kind of a, you know, a mix up of that kind of stuff. So it's fun. It's been fun over here. And I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, and and like Skyview getting to play its traditional city of Nampa rival, something they hadn't been able yeah. to do for for several years. So uh, I did forget to mention Capital also a big win over Hawaii, uh, forty nine to twenty two. I, I think we've discovered now, Wayne. You know there was a lot of mystery surrounding Hawaii coming into the season, but it, I think we kind of knew that it was going to be a young team, a lot of sophomores having to play right away, and they're they're going to take their lumps for a year or two, and then probably be pretty good. Yeah, they are. I, I really. You know, I, you're right. You know, I guess the best thing I can say about Hawaii, they're 0-2. They've learned stuff. Each game, though, they've scored at least 20 points. So they've got an offense that can co- score some points. It looks like right now their problems are on defense where they got to shore it up because they've given up a lot. Of, I think 57 points the first game, 49 this time. So they can shore up that defense. And I've always been – keep defense simple, stupid. You know, have 11 guys out there that come after you. You know, run to the ball, and eventually good things will happen. You know, so I think Hawaii is going to be okay, and it's going to be interesting. They host CUNA this week, and I'm not saying that they can beat up on CUNA, but I'm saying it's the first home game of the year for Hawaii. I think they can get better and get a win uh, this week against CUNA. CUNA has had to go to Lewiston, and they had a tough game, you know, last week when they played. Uh, So, you know, over Eagle. And, uh, you know, so Kuna's hurting right now. Now they got to go on the road to Hawaii and play there. This may be the week that the Storm comes out and gets their first win in the history books. That's also the homecoming for Sherm Blazer. He was the former head coach at Kuna, won a state championship there at the 4A level, and now is the uh, head man at Hawaii. So that's. Yeah. And you want to speak of homecoming last week, Meridian was homecoming on Friday night. It's like game two. <laughs> it was homecoming. How does that happen? When, when do you start doing homecoming on game two of the year? I mean, uh, I don't know. I just, I'm sorry. I just, it just, it threw me because all the, I, I saw the homecoming queens and the kings and the whole court out there, and I'm going, it's homecoming. <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be like in October or something like that? Right. Well, tradition. I guess we've thrown tradition to the wind. I think. Yeah, and, and these uh, unprecedented times for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I hear that one more time on the TV, all the things might... that tri- of all the things that can trip me up, I'm letting that trip me up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. I will say uh, when I was in high school and I was a senior, you know, usually the last home game of the year is senior night, right? Where all the senior players get honored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually had our senior night on our first home game of the season at my high school when I was a senior. And our coach mm. said, I want senior night to be our first home game. So the community knows who our leaders are for the, for the season. And I thought, oh, that's pretty after. cool. Yeah, it's actually not too bad, but I thought maybe it was just because some of them may not make it to the senior night, you know, <laughs> grade wise, you know. Right, yeah. I know that was maybe my biggest struggle was get through that senior year because you're concentrating on everything else. Just keep those grades where you need to keep them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, for well. sure. That, that's actually pretty cool. I like that. Who the leaders are. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. Uh, the four ASIC, we talked about BK, the big win over Bora. I think the, the next biggest story for me was Middleton at home losing to Minico 21 to 13. This is supposed to be a high octane Vikings offense, but they turned it over four times and that's just not going to win you a lot of games. Not against Minico. I mean, really, I mean, Minico came in there two and oh, now they're three and oh. And, you know, obviously Minico came on a mission. They knew that they're playing a tough Middleton team. And when you turn it over, I mean, still, you got a one-score game, 21-13, you know, so you're right there, eight-point game, touchdown, two-point conversion, ties it up. We talked about overtime. It was all there for Middleton to win it at their own home field. But bottom line is, Minico came in, got the job done, and the Spartans looking pretty good at 3-0, and feeling pretty darn good about themselves. And they're showing up in the 4A poll at number five. So, and I think maybe he deserved to be a little higher than that, but season's young, you know, and as we've just talked about before, you know, it's out to earn it. You've got to earn it. And any coach will tell you the only time to be ranked number one is last game of the year. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and in Minico, as far as I know, is the only three and O team in the state since they played in week zero. They, and most teams have only played two games. They've played three. So yeah, they're three and O well-deserved. The other big story was Emmett. 
uh, kind of in a shootout with Weezer, and we know Weezer's going to be a good 3A team this year. They've got Brett Spencer at quarterback, who's already got an offer from the Idaho Vandals right. to play quarterback. And and Emmett, you know, I, I think Coach Hargett at Emmett kind of undersold how good his team's going to be this year. He kind of came in with the, yeah, I don't know, we were going to be hopefully competitive, and I think he undersold it. I think Emmett's pretty good. Emmett's pretty good. They're always going to be pretty good. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago that – Emmett somehow just finds those, uh, you know, those farmers out there and the, the young men are out there, shuck, you know, putting hay up on the, on, the, on the trailer and getting it done. They are strong. They are good. They've got a good quarterback. 34-28 was the final. So that one was a wild and wooly game. Uh, I don't know if it was, you know, hey, we're 4A, you're 3A, that mentality that, that got them, that bit them. I never know what it is. Sometimes you just don't take your opponent that serious. But uh, I, I'm not saying that's what happened because I have no idea. But it was a good game, and I bet you Emmett learned a lot. Then again, one of those 4A versus 3A games to where now you get back into competition against the other guys. You know, now you've tasted that 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 defeat, and you don't want to taste that again. So I mean, it could do Emmett a lot of good down the road. Yeah, for sure. And then the the last game was Valley View, and they were uh, hosting Hillcrest, which is a team that's got a new coach, entirely new system, kind of tough to scout for. They went from one extreme to the other. Hillcrest, they they basically ran the ball every play last year with everybody bunched in tight, and now they've kind of gone the opposite. They've kind of spread it out with this new coach. Um, but Valley View picked up a nice twenty-two to fourteen win. They're one and one, and I, I think still a work in progress. But we'll see where Valley View ends up as we as we get further into the season. But. And again, I think it was kind of cool that you got cross state, you know, teams playing each other, get to see everybody. Usually, we don't get to see, you know, a Valley View won't get to see a Hillcrest or somebody like that until playoff time if it comes to then. So it's always nice to have that opportunity in the middle of the season. We we mentioned it early on when Highland and uh, Rocky Mountain kicked off the season on a Saturday night, how cool that was to have those two perennial playoff powers playing first week of the year. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think whoever's making the schedule, they're doing a good job, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Speaking of the schedule, let's talk about what's coming up. You mentioned sure. uh, thir- Thursday night at Donald Larson Park, Skyview against Boise. We kind of already talked about that matchup. Friday, you, man, you got a great game. Rocky Mountain at eagle that's going to be a fantastic matchup can rocky mountain bounce back after that tough loss how good is eagle i mean we're, we're going to find out yeah and so and and they don't like each other and those who don't know much about it they're just down the road from each other i mean it's just just down the hill there they are and they'll go after one another so and a lot of the kids you know have gone to the same school some have gone to eagle then went to rocky mountain rocky mountain eagle so everybody, and they go, you know, to school, to get, different schools together, different churches together in the area. So everybody knows everybody. And so there's no secrets and they're going to be coming after one another. It should be a, kind of interesting. I uh, like Friday night. I would like to see that game. I'm not going to be able to because I'll be doing the Boise State pregame on the UTEP game that uh, that uh, Boise State plays UTEP at 730. And so I take it right up till seven o'clock with the pregame. Uh, there, but uh, so I've got that game going for me. But you know what? That this is a fantastic game, uh, Rocky Mountain Eagle, and it's going to be audio only right here on IdahoSports.com. That's right. I, I forgot uh, you, you've got Boise State duties Friday night, and so Clay Clay Hatfield will have the play by play for that game. So it's it's actually kind of a triple header uh, audio only broadcast on Idaho Sports this week. We've got the Thursday night game at Donald mm-hmm. Larson Park with you, Wayne. Uh, Seven o'clock kickoff on IdahoSports.com Friday. The Rocky Mountain Eagle matchup with Clay Hatfield kicking off at seven o'clock, and then uh, a Saturday game, uh, the rare Saturday contest. You've got Bora uh, hosting Mountain View. That game's going to kick off uh, at eleven in the morning, also at Donna Larson Park. Yeah, I mean that's unbelievable. Bora Mountain View, uh, you know what a game that should be. Now here's the problem: Bora is off to a tough start. They're zero and two. They're really struggling. I don't know. I haven't seen Bora. I haven't heard much about, you know, it really the, the, the good part about being in this job is that you get to see a lot of teams. The bad part is you don't get to see a lot of teams because you're seeing those other teams. I haven't seen Bora play yet, so I don't know what their struggles are exactly. Uh, but I have seen Mountain View, and I know what they've got. And that, you know, Mountain View has got that game's going to be played, you know, at Donald Larson Park. But I don't think it's going to make a difference. You know, Mountain View is on a roll right now and they're feeling good about themselves. So I think that's going to be interesting. Yeah. It'll, it'll be nice for you to at least see Bora and, and their new head coach, JQ Kenyon. Yeah. As well. so. yeah. And I've known JQ for a long time. He's been around for years here in the Valley, been with the Bora program and whatnot. 
So I know what they're trying to do. You know, the the, the biggest problem Bora has is, of course, now that, you know, with the with the growth movement to the West, you know, towards the Rocky Mountains, the Mountain Views, and now the Owyhees and people like that, uh, it, you know, the kids to pick from, they're just not there as much as they used to be where Bora used to dominate everything. So it's tough. So when you get a couple of good players, you've got to put it all together, and then you got to make them believe. Now, I know Bora had a great year. I know uh, Coach Quinton said that they were really great in the, in the weight room. They did a good job. And uh, Kenyon said there was a great job in the weight room. And so, uh, I mean, I think he's going to get him there. Can he get him over the hump against Mountain View? Uh, that's going to be a big hump right now, more a mountain than a hump. But uh, it'll be interesting to see that one Saturday morning. Yeah, what's happening to those Boise schools is happening in Idaho Falls, where the the schools that are in the inner city, that are in the heart of the city, well, everybody's moving out to the suburbs. So it's those schools on the outlying area. Yeah. That, so, so like Idaho Falls High School, which has a, a long, proud tradition, they're really struggling right now. And the schools like Skyline and Hillcrest and Thunder Ridge that are kind of on the periphery, they're the ones that are really benefiting. And I, I just don't know that there's an easy answer to how you get around that problem but. no there, there is some recruiting i mean you're not supposed to but you try to you know and guys try to get over here they switch schools they do this they pay with the fee whatever they have to do to do that but there's not enough of it and you're right that growth movement to one area in a particular community uh makes it you know it shifts the power of the balance of power that's for sure yeah, and the, and the recruiting isn't from the coaches it's it's the athletes it's the players exactly. getting together and saying exactly. hey we should team up so yeah exactly yeah. Uh, the other game I wanted to to highlight, there's actually two of them that I wanted sure. to highlight. You uh, Timberline at Meridian. We're going to find out real quick if, you know, if Timberline really is ready to take that next step, um, even though they are two and zero and Meridian's one and one. I think we both agree that Meridian probably is the better team right now, but that could change. Um, and then, and then the 4A matchup, I mean, right off the bat in 4A SIC play, Wayne, you've got Bishop Kelly at Emmett. Those might be the top two teams in the league meeting up right away. Yeah, and Emmett's going to be rip roar mad. They're going to be coming off that loss to Weezer. They're going to come out there. BK is going to keep coming in, feeling pretty good about themselves, you know, with their wins and 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 uh, even their loss to Eagle. They know that they were right there and they should have won that game. As far as that Timberline Meridian game goes, one thing we haven't talked about: Meridian has three wide receivers. Two of them are six three, one six four. They've got a bevy of wide receivers that are. Davis Thacker is unbelievable. I mean, he did a great job. He was my player of the game last week. Uh, he did a great job, and they got a couple of other guys that are out there, big receivers that any college coach would love to have for a receiving core. So, and then when you throw in the fact that uh, I think Malachi Martinez should be back, that was the word. And even if he's not back, I tell you what, little bro can get the job done. Zeke uh, looks good. And they just have a lot of talent all the way around. They're a big team. Their offensive line is big. Cross Antonacci, wow, he's almost impossible to stop. But not only that, Cross can punt. He can run. He can catch the ball. He's like a triple threat, Brandon. I mean, he can really get her done. So, yeah, I, I think Timberline's come a long way. But this will no doubt be their biggest test of the year coming up Friday night. Yep, for sure, for sure. Well, before we hand out our gold stars for the week, Wayne, I did want to just real quick give a shout out to some of the the volleyball programs over there in the SIC, especially at the 5A level. You know, results are kind of scattershot right now because yeah. teams go to a tournament and you get three scores, but they played six matches. And so it's kind of an incomplete puzzle. But one thing that is pretty consistent are the weekly coaches polls. And when you look at the, the volleyball coaches poll right now in the 5A, there's actually seven teams in the top five because you had a three-way tie for that fifth spot. But of those seven teams that are in the poll, four are from the SIC. Skyview is the, the number one team in the poll, deservedly so. Uh, defending state champs, bring back a lot of talent. They've, they've looked really good. Mountain View is currently ranked second in the in the statewide coaches poll. Eagle is ranked fourth, and then Centennial is tied for fifth. So between Skyview, Mountain View, Eagle, and Centennial, looks like the 5 ASIC for volleyball uh, really starting to heat up. Yeah, and I'll tell you this, Skyview was so good last year. They made everybody better. They made everybody. They kind of set the bar and said, okay, this is how we're going to play volleyball at Skyview, okay? And everybody goes, oh, okay, we better raise our bar too and get going. So Skyview has made everybody in the SIC a little bit better because they know they're going to have to, you know, just be better every week. And so I think, yeah, that's that's what you see happening. And, again, we talked about that. All the teams you mentioned are in that growth movement area to where people are coming in and they're getting a lot of folks that moving in here from the West coast, from the Californias, from Oregon transferring in. 
and we're seeing some where volleyball really is pretty big. So we're seeing some pretty tough volleyball in this valley and, and Skyview right now, to their credit, leading the way in that that regard. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch that that league battle all season long oh, out yeah. on the volleyball courts. So. One thing I do want to say about uh, boys soccer, 5A SIC right now, you still got heading into the week, Timberline and Bora undefeated, 6 0 5 And then you got Boise, Rocky Mountain, and Skyview all at 4 1. So you've got five teams right there, you know, that are with only one loss at the most, you know. So it, that's going to be pretty tough going down there. And then 4A, you got to give a shout out to Caldwell. They're four and one. You know, Caldwell's having the trouble on the football field, but right now in soccer, they're doing pretty well. I got to love that. Yeah, and it's Rocky interesting. Mountain, how- yeah, oh, Rocky Mountain ahead. Girls in five A six and one. That's the last one I want to talk about. Uh, Rocky Mountain Girls six and one in girls soccer. So soccer season well underway, and and, and some some teams that are really showing that they're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, it's interesting how some of those schools that uh, maybe are struggling in football, like Boise or Caldwell, are both really excellent in soccer. It's just an interesting dichotomy for sure. So, well, Boise's always been some uh, kind of a weird thing to me because they've struggled in football the last few years, but they are always good. They are the best in track and field, cross country, basketball. They're always good. You mentioned soccer; they're always the toughest there. And I'm kind of wondering, you know, where are the football players? I know they got to be there because they've got athletes. But that tradition there of being great in track and field and soccer kind of sometimes sucks up those guys that could be football players. And But I think they're getting there. I really do think that, you know, uh, Coach Terry is going to get that thing going, and it'll be interesting to see them on Thursday night against Skyview. Yeah, I'm I'm going to tune into that just because I'm I'm intrigued to see what Boise can can bring to the table. Again, that's at seven o'clock on IdahoSports.com yep. audio yep. only broadcast. All right, Wayne, uh, let's hand out some gold stars for the week. We do this every week. We get we hand out the the gold star, the helmet sticker to to one player that we thought really stood above the rest. I'm going to let you go first because, quite frankly, your gold star is a super 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 gold star, and mine is kind of the well, there's a rest of the story type thing on his gold star. So okay. Go sounds good. Okay. Well, I, I I don't want to be accused of being a capital homer, but for the second week in a row, I'm going with <laughs> a capital homer. eagle. We, we, we picked Josh Summers last week. I picked Josh uh, Summers, the defensive lineman who uh, had a couple sacks, blocked that punt. Well, this week I'm going to the offensive side of the ball and Max Clark. It's somebody I know you've seen uh, in person, Wayne. And boy, you know, he had, he had a, just an average day. 25 of 26 passing he only missed on one throw and he threw for 396 yards and six touchdowns in that in that big romp for the capital eagles so max clark junior quarterback getting it done uh 49 22 over Hawaii. and had he not been injured last year um i think capital really could have done some damage at the state level and hopefully he can stay healthy again this year you know, something you said would send shivers down the spine of everybody else in the SIC. Junior quarterback, Max Clark. Junior. 25 and 26. That's just unbelievable. I mean, you, you, you seriously, I, I don't think, you know, anybody would expect you could do that good. 25 out of 26, almost 400 yards, six touchdowns. Unbelievable. Uh, I've seen him play. He is really good. And he is what... Why Capital was my dark horse, if you recall. They they were right there. I had Napa and Capital as my two dark horses this year to watch out for. And I said, believe me, Capital is not necessarily a dark horse. They could be a contender. They're knocking on the door of contendership. They were something else. My gold star, I'm, I'm going to go back. I got to go to Zeke Martinez. And I do this only because of the rest of the story that we've already articulated. The fact that he's a freshman, that he was on the sideline. He wears number 25. You know, he goes to school in the ninth grade, then comes over and practices with the big boys. His brother's one of them, starting quarterback Malachi Martinez. But the coaching staff said, you watch, if we get a chance, we're going to put Zeke in tonight. They did. It was 7-0 Meridian, and he basically led him to a 41-0 victory. He was 10 of 14. He threw for 181 yards, threw for three touchdown passes. He's a freshman, folks. He, he shouldn't even know the offense yet, and yet he's in there taking care of it and completing passes that were right on the money, throws a tight spiral, has a great arm. And I'm like, I don't think, I don't think I've seen a freshman quarterback in high school as good as Zeke Martinez uh, since I've been in Idaho. I really don't. And that dates back to 82. Yeah, it's pretty impressive stuff. And uh, like we talked about it, I think it's even rare for a freshman to be on the varsity team. They're usually playing C-level football and then to start, I mean, it's just incredible. Or, yeah, or to I've, play. 
I've seen a couple of soccer players start as freshmen. You know, my son actually was a freshman starter for Bora High School way back when. But, you know, it was okay. I mean, he just did what he did. But the bottom line is, is that uh, in football, it's a completely different story. It really, really is. And the position of quarterback, I mean, maybe you got a wide receiver that, you know, as a freshman, a six foot two, just a young kid, throw him out there, see what he can catch a couple balls. But to lead your team and to come out there and to have that respect in the huddle and to know what to do. And Meridian goes with a no huddle. And they run over to the coach, you know, the quarterback runs over to the coach, gets the play, comes back out. To be able to do that, go back and forth, run the offense, not make any mistakes, and still get the numbers that he got. Uh, can you can I say I'm impressed? Totally <laughs> yeah. impressed. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that'll do it for this week's edition of the SIC prep cast. Uh Next week, we'll have more gold stars to hand out. We'll have three uh, IdahoSports.com broadcasts to talk about, plus all the other exciting action that's going on. And again, not just in football, but volleyball and soccer as well. We'll continue to update you on how things are looking in those mm -hmm. sports. And we, we are off and rolling, Wayne. I, I can't believe week three is here. Now, I looked at that the other day, and I said, wow, we got a couple of weeks in the book. And then I looked, and it just keeps coming at you. So Thursday night, I'll be down there at Donald Larson Park. We'll see. I'll get my first look at Skyview and Boise, and I'll uh, I'll be a little bit enlightened, even more so on, on teams. You know, as I get to see more of these teams and better understand where they're at, what they can do, it, it helps me with what the season really is going to bring. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be a lot of fun this week. And then, of course, you know, you got the Bora Mountain View game on Saturday. So it'll be fun. Yep, it's going to be a lot of fun, and you can see all of the games that we are broadcasting at idahosports.com. You just go to our page and click on the Game Streams link at the top, and, and that'll show you the whole schedule of games statewide that we've got going on. Well, that'll do it for this edition of the SIC PrepCast. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. You can get the audio for this podcast wherever you download your podcasts, as well as idahosports.com. You can catch the video of this on the idahosports.com YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook page. For Wayne DeZubak, I'm Brandon Bainey. Enjoy the weekend, everybody, and we'll see you back here next week on the SIC PrepCast from idahosports.com.